dyscalculia is not just dyslexia for numerals. Our ethos is about instilling a bit of that passion and that need not to put children in boxes but to, to free them from the box. Jodie's really changed throughout year six. She's a very keen hard worker and I think because of that she's made a lot of progress this year. And you think you've improved in maths? Kind of work by myself. Mm -hmm. Yes you do, you work independently. Dyscalculia is a persistent and significant difficulty with processing numbers. If you present this to children, to a child with dyscalculia and say, which one has more dots, they'll have, the, they'll have difficulty. What they'll tend to do is they'll count the dots. And as they're counting, they'll lose their place. So it draws on sequencing skills a great deal. Here is a child who is eight years old. I didn't expect the child not to be able to add 32 plus 20 and to answer that as 32. This indicates that the child didn't have a concept of what 32 stands for and what 20 stands for. And this one, how many pieces have we divided it into? Two. Two, so that why we, you've said that was a half. And how many pieces? It mainly presents itself in maths lessons, but where there's cross-curricular aspects, you might see the heightened anxiety or the difficulty in comparison to their peers. Another misconception is that dyscalculia is expressed in exactly the same way in all children. So Jodie's dyscalculia does present itself in different ways in maths. Uh, for example, I worked with her timesing by 10, 100 and 1000. She couldn't really grasp the concept. She knew to add a zero or she knew to add however many zeros was needed for each question, but that was the extent of the knowledge. We have a range of assessment tools that we use for every child. So we have pupil progress meetings, we have assessment weeks, and we accumulate all that information and each term we will look at which children are making less than expected progress. And then I might then use um, a range of observational tools or tick lists to assess whether that child has just a developmental difficulty with maths or whether it's coming under a category that could be classed as a learning need. We have a range of strategies at our disposal to support children with dyscalculia. Specifically to dyscalculia, we ran a training session for teachers about what dyscalculia was, but also um, gave them some concrete examples of the resources we use. Uh, when I trained as a teacher, I didn't receive much information about dyscalculia. To meet the needs of uh, Jodie, I sit with Miss Flora, my TA, at least once a week to go through our plans and we adapt that planning to suit her needs. I try not to make her feel like there's anything particularly different as much as possible. Okay. That yeah. sounds like she had a really good lesson. Yeah, she did. She really enjoyed it it's really important to make sure they don't feel that they have a difficulty. The way we foster relationships in our school, we take time to get to know the children, we take time to have conversations with them. Enable interventions where possible. They should structure lessons so that there's not just one level at which one can work. 
I find a variety of resources effective to use for Jodie. Um, she very much enjoys going on the laptop. We have lots of programs that she can go on that are really beneficial to her. We have a lot of books and SEN resources in school. Some children who just struggle with keeping up with the pace of the lesson for whatever reason, I sometimes do a similar resource for them. Well, I really liked the lesson that I observed this morning. So maybe you can do one each or we'll share them out, it's up to you. Well, the children were exposed to information in various forms and the ways in which the atmosphere was relaxed, there was no um, pressure or competition, um, children helped one another but was not um, placed under pressure to achieve or made to feel that she was failing. All parents want to support their children at home, but with homework, for example, that can be a real battleground for parents and children sometimes. So to reassure the parent that actually it's okay if they're only doing one question, if that one question takes 20 minutes, you don't have to do any more questions. So the differentiation of homework is really important so that parents aren't feeling the same frustration as, as their children. In terms of developing my knowledge, as I said, we have had training on a variety of SEN issues. Having had two dyscalculia children that I've taught, I found it's really building a relationship with them and working out what they can do more than anything I would find online, for example. Advice to new teachers, I would say that you have to get to know the individual child and that's going to be essential to them progressing. communicating with your Senko when you're unsure or with any other teacher in the building who might have an insight or who worked with that child in the past, that's the best thing you can do 